evidence of advanced medical knowledge apart from enigmatic works in stone. There are also telltale signs of extremely advanced surgical procedures that were performed in days long past. These come in the form of numerous skulls from the Neolithic age that appear to have been trepanned. Trepanning involves inserting plates into a patient's skull. It's a delicate and quite advanced medical procedure. Richard Mooney explains the process in his book Colony Earth in this way. Trepanning today is an operation in which a section of bone in the skull is removed, either to ease pressure caused by a tumor or blood clot, or to remove splinters of bone caused by a skull fracture, and the cavity closed by a plate. The operation is hardly minor and requires great skill and care to perform. It is difficult to believe that Neolithic man, if he was, as has been thought, extremely primitive, could have carried out such operations with the crudest techniques, of flint knife, and no anesthetics or notions of hygiene. Evidence shows that the survivors of this ancient cranial treatment also went on to live for years afterwards. This is very remarkable considering that up until quite recent times, patients undergoing any type of trepanning had a very high mortality rate due to infection, blood poisoning and the other obvious complications involved with cranial surgery. Still more evidence of ancient trepanning also comes to us from the former Soviet Union where examination of several skulls unearthed at Ishtaikunui near Lake Sewan in Armenia, indicate a similar highly developed technique of cranial surgery employed over 4,000 years ago. One patient had obviously suffered a serious head injury and the prehistoric surgeon had neatly plugged the fracture by using a carefully shaped wedge that had been delicately crafted from animal bone. The skull showed obvious signs that the patient's bone tissue had then grown over and enveloped the plug which adequately indicates that the person had survived the operation and lived for quite some time afterwards. Another similar skull was found revealing that one woman had been operated upon to remove an inch-wide object that had smashed through her skull, penetrating directly into the brain but the surgeon had cut around the object to remove the splinters and again closed the wound using a section of crafted animal bone. Such an operation would have been incredibly complex and would also have undoubtedly involved brain surgery and yet the growth of the bone over the wound again shows that this patient of prehistoric times was unable to live on for many years afterwards. The petrified human skull Another completely baffling artifact was unearthed in the form of a petrified human cranium with the eye sockets broken that was found along with other human bones and soft organs in Pennsylvania and again in an anthracite vein figure 34. According to official geological estimates, the structures of anthracite are a minimum of 300 million years old which means that this man existed on Earth in the Carboniferous period or possibly even earlier. Ancient electricity There is compelling evidence of an ancient electrical supply that was used as much as we use the electric current today. On a low voltage scale. Several clay pots have been excavated in Iraq that appeared to have been soldered with a lead flash tin alloy, topped with copper discs and sealed with bitumen fig. 5. The device is in fact, basically a laden jar. When a mixture of copper sulfate and acetic acid citrus juice for vinegar was added to these excavated pots they produced a round to volts of electricity. Over the years many more of these electric cells have been discovered in other places throughout the old Persian Empire and also in Egypt indicating that the use of them was widely and quite commonly practiced. Electroplating is a technique that was previously thought to be only recently discovered however such small voltage is to affect for electroplating objects and may help to explain the discovery of pieces of electroplated gold jewelry found at sites in Egypt. on the higher voltage scale. Scholars have often wondered how such intricate paintings were done in many Egyptian tombs and yet there are no signs of soot on the ceilings of any of them. Soot would indicate the use of a candle, lamp or some kind of flame to provide light for the artist. Many have surmised that a series of linking mirrors may have been used to bring in light from the outside. There are however, some very interesting paintings on the walls of a tomb at Abydos in Egypt that appear to show people holding large filament devices like big light bulbs that are resting on stands and attached to some kind of power supply box by a cable while other people are working nearby with hand tools figure 36.
These filament devices also look very similar to a device known as Crookes tube figure 37 which is an early cathode ray tube. X-rays were actually discovered while conducting experiments with a Crookes tube. An ancient X-ray machine there is also a quite remarkable rock painting that can be found in the caves of Taro Muerto in Peru that closely resembles a figure with raised arms holding what appears to be an X-ray plate of the thorax. I have been unable to obtain a photograph of the painting but apparently the ribs, chest cavity and a central column resembling the spine are all clearly visible on the plate the figure is holding. Now what on earth could that be doing there? A fossilized human shoe print The most amazing artifact was discovered in Antelope Springs, Utah by William J. Meister in June of 1968. Meister split open a two-inch thick slab of rock with his hammer and the rock fell open like a book. Revealing the shoe print of a human on one side with trilobites right in the print itself figure 38. This artifact is extremely significant because this is not a footprint. No, 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 it's a shoe print. The other half of the rock slab in turn, showed an almost perfect mold of the print and fossils. The shoe print is 10 and 1 fourth inches long and 3 and 1 half inches wide. The heel is indented slightly like the sole of a modern shoe and seems to have crushed a living trilobite. The obvious problem the artifact creates is that trilobites lived between 300 and 600 million years ago yet here is evidence that a person wearing a shoe once crushed one beneath his heel. The heel of the fossil print even displays fine stitching similar to that found on a modern leather shoe. Go figure. The Drophus stones there are very few artifacts more mystifying than the Drophus stones. The tale of the stones is quite an amazing story and sometimes should be given for a reasonable account. I just love this story. Our tale begins in 1938 high in the Biancura Yula Mountains on the border between China and Tibet. A group of archaeologists, led by a professor Kai Piyut, were exploring the series of underlinked caves when, much to their surprise, they came upon a collection of neatly arranged graves within the cave system. The graves contained within them a number of somewhat unusual skeletal remains and the scientists at first surmised that they had discovered a new species of ape. However, since it is unreasonable to conclude that apes buried each other it was deduced that their skeletons could only be of an unusual and possibly hitherto unknown race of human beings. The remains were quite unique in that they were only around 5 feet in height, had unnaturally spindly bodies and quite large and overdeveloped heads figure 39. While the archaeological team was studying the skeletons, one of the men also accidentally stumbled across a large, round stone disc that lay half buried in the dust on the floor of the cave. The disc had a hole in the center and a fine, spiral group radiated to the rim and looked ridiculously like the kind of Stone Age gramophone record. Figure 40. Closer inspection, however, showed that the spiraling group was, in fact, a continuous line of tiny and very closely written characters that had been somehow meticulously inscribed onto the surface of the disc. The object that appeared was indeed a record of sorts, though not of the gramophone variety. On the walls of the caves themselves archaeologists also discovered crude pictures of the rising sun, the moon, the earth and some unidentifiable stars all joined together by lines of pea-sized dots. The discs and the cave drawings have both been dated at around 12,000 years old. In all, 716 such discs were eventually found and retrieved from within the cave system. All have been dated as being between 10,000 and 12,000 years old. Each stone disc is precisely 9 inches 22.7 centimeters in diameter and 3 fourths inch 2 centimeters thick. Each disc has a perfectly circular 2 centimeters hole in the exact center and each bears an inscription in the form of strange carved hieroglyphics. For 20 years after their discovery, all attempts to translate them having failed, the discs sat in the Peking Museum mostly forgotten. Finally in 1963 another Chinese professor, Drive Sunam Nui was finally able to break the code and set about deciphering the discs. 
and it's here that the story becomes even more intriguing. Initially, the professor's conclusions on the meaning of the discs was considered so shattering that his transcriptions were suppressed and he was forbidden to publish his findings by the Peking Academy of Prehistory. However two years later in 1965, Drive, Nui and four of his colleagues at last received permission to release his transcription. The story it told was astounding, to say the least for the discs told the tale of a spaceship, perhaps like a probe or scout ship, from a distant planet that crash-landed in the Himalaya Mountains region thousands of years ago. They tell how the surviving occupants of the spacecraft, the Dropa, had taken refuge in the caves of the mountains but despite their peaceful intentions, they had been misunderstood by members of the local Ha tribe who were occupying neighboring caves. The Ha tribe distrusted them and hunted down the survivors and killed some of them. According to Drive, Sunam Nui, one of the first lines of the hieroglyphs reads, The Dropas came down from the clouds in their aircraft. Our men, women and children hid in the caves ten times before sunrise. When at last they understood the sign language of the Dropas, they realized that the newcomers had peaceful intentions. Another section mentions that the Ha tribe eventually became the friends of the Dropa and even expressed regret that their spaceship had crash-landed in such remote and inaccessible mountains and that there had been no way of building a new one to enable the Dropa to return to their own planet. However, in those 27 years since the discovery of the first disc, Archaeologists and anthropologists had also learned a good deal more about the isolated by Ankara Ula region and much of the information seemed to corroborate the bizarre story recorded on the discs. Local legends, still surviving in the area, also speak of small, gaunt, yellow-faced men who came from the clouds, long, long ago. These legends tell of men who had huge, bulging heads and puny bodies and were considered to be so ugly and repellent that they were hunted down by local tribes men on horseback and many were killed. The description of the invaders is also remarkably close to the skeletons originally discovered in the caves in 1938 by Professor Kai Put. Most interestingly, the cave systems of the Biancura Ula mountain area are still inhabited today by two Samil troglodyte tribes known as the Hams and the Dropas. The Dropa tribes men are themselves extremely odd in appearance, being somewhat frail and stunted and averaging only about five feet in height. They are neither typically Chinese nor Tibetan and anthropologists readily admit. Their racial background really is a mystery. Are the Dropa the descendants of the people mentioned in the discs? Do these strange discs actually record the disastrous space mission by alien astronauts 12,000 years ago? Nearly all the leading theorists believe so. We may never know for sure but the message contained in the discs is extremely fascinating nonetheless. The fossilized human finger Another similar artifact that simply just should not exist is this fossilized human finger. The fossil, known simply as 93-083 Deutsche Marks dates from the Cretaceous period or about 100-110 to 110 million years ago figure 41. X-rays of the specimen have also shown some less dense areas within the finger revealing the presence of marrow within the bone, shown in the slide by the darker areas.